missed our most recent service or you would like to watch it again, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the service with Pastor Tracy. Yeah, let's engage with the Word of God today and let our lives be transformed. Spirit of God, we invite you to minister in this place today, Lord. I know that you've ministered to the worship, to this congregation, and even to those here on stage. But now, Lord, Spirit of God, I ask that you minister to the hearts and minds of these people. Speak through me, Lord, not that my words would change people, but Lord, that your word would change man today women today. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Welcome to the hill. Amen. Thank you for joining us in person and online. As they said in the announcements, a lot of things were moving into August. A lot of things are, are uh, changing and coming back to life. Uh, all the ministries, not every single one, but most of the ministries are beginning to meet again during the week. Get, on, get a bulletin, get online and check those out. We also have a special event this uh, uh, Friday night, uh, Radical Life with, um, it's all right here. And um, okay, it's uh, Lindsay, little Lindsay. Uh, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to her ministering in uh, in the event on on Friday night, and this is a women sponsored event that is welcome to all. So, guys, if you'd like to be a part of that, please come out and be a part of that. Also, on Friday night, we'll have a great time of uh, of hearing the ministry of Lindsay Russell Smith. So, uh, looking forward to that immensely. I can hardly believe it's July 31st. It is the last Sunday of the month of July. It, tomorrow, August starts, and a lot of great things start in August. A lot of you young people, I'd encourage all of us to start reading the book of Proverbs, cha no, yeah, Proverbs chapter 1, and go through the entire thing every day, a chapter. Some of us have been doing it for some time, and some have maybe started and stopped. It's time to get back in that routine, because we all need to get smart in August. Yeah. Not smart aleck, not smart mouth. But when you get smart in the month of August, amen? So let's do that. We only have five more months left in the year, and our, our educational institutions will be op reopening soon. Vacations will be coming to a completion for some families, and we'll be getting back to the fall routine. Now, what is that fall routine? Well, this year, that fall routine is special because there's a lot of stuff going on in the fall. First of all, something's going on very important, and you say, have you started? Yes, yes, I've started. I've started my timer, and, and I don't care what you think about what I'm going to say next. Remember, remember, people have an opinion, and then God has his word. Okay? So you can have an opinion, and I want your opinion to match up with God's word. I don't want, I don't want your opinion to try to overrule God's word because that's what takes place in our world too often. I feel this way or I think this. Well, let me tell you that it doesn't cut it. Okay? God's word is what is ultimate, uh, ultimately the, the authority or should be the authority in our life and in our world. Our world. The world that I want to live in is a world that is that gives authority to God and his word, his truth not the world's truth. So this month is an important month because, or this fall is an important fall because here's what's going to take place. There are elections taking place. We currently have, we currently live in the United States of America. It, it's still called the United States of America. And we live in what is currently a representative republic. Okay? We have, we have representatives that speak for each and every one of us, and so it is important. As followers of Jesus Christ, it's important that the world hear our voice. Yeah. You say, well, that's politics. We shouldn't get involved. No, God, I believe, predestined the United States to be here to what? To give the gospel to the world, and we, we have done that in a powerful way. We've done it in a powerful way. Here, here's the problem, though. Well, there's lots of problems. As I think about it, there's a whole bunch of problems. 
But here's the problem. They don't want Christians to be involved in politics. They don't want us to vote. They don't want our voice heard. If our voice is not heard, whose voice will be heard? If we don't make a stand, who, whose stand will the world take? It's important. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I'll tell you, if we let man rule like man wants to rule without the power and spirit of God involved, we're going to be in trouble. We are in trouble. And so today, as I, as I look for the next five months, I, seven months have passed. Have we wasted those seven months? No. Uh, but, but let me tell you, we have struggled through some of those seven months, not doing exactly what God would have us to do. But ultimately, we have five more months. I'm encouraging you in the five months to let the voice of God speak. Yes, and the voice of God speaks through the church that is following his word. I could go a lot of places with this because ultimately there's a lot of churches not speaking the word of God anymore. You say, is this going to be your message? No, I've got a big bunch of stuff for you today and, and we're going to just keep going. So, so edu the, the election's important, but also education. You know, we're getting ready to send all these young children and their skulls full of mush to school to be educated. Children and ourselves are being educated on a regular basis. You, whether you know it or not, you're getting an education. No matter how old you are, I'm, I'm well, I'm older. And uh, as I'm older, I'm still getting an education on a regular basis. I, I still have to learn. When you stop learning, you die. Okay? You die when you stop learning. And, and ultimately, we're all learning. But here's what we have. We have children that have been given to us. And, and as it says in, in Psalms chapter uh, uh, 127, verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from, from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. You can go all through Scripture and you can see how important children are. And the, and the teaching of those children is so important. In, in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, many of you have claimed the scripture, train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And some of us today are saying, oh, woe is me. They have departed from it. Have we taught it like we need to teach it? Have we been the good examples that we need to be? Have we done like they said in the Old Testament, attach God's commands to the refrigerator? Oh, it's a doorpost then. It should be the refrigerator now because we visit that more than door, doorposts. We got kids that never go outside, so attach it to the refrigerator. <laughs> to the phone, to the iPhone, whatever. Here, here we got a problem. We are getting ready to educate a bunch of young people, they need to be educated in the Lord. We fall so short. I, I, I have a huge burden on my heart for the education of children. Me too. I, I really do. I, it's a burden now. Can I do it? No. I'm, I'm not capable in, in many ways, but ultimately, uh, uh, and some of you wouldn't want me to be over your children, but here's the, here's the factor. The factor is that we need to train them up in the admiration of the Lord. And what are we doing instead? We're sacrificing them on the idol of cultural acceptance. We don't, we don't teach them. Maybe, maybe it's homeschool. Maybe it's private school. Maybe, maybe they're strong enough to be a part of public school. But I tell you, I, I question a lot of children being able to, to, to thrive in their Christian walk in a public school. Say, Tracy, you're treading on dangerous ground right now. I'm speaking my heart, and I believe the word of God because he's, he gives a responsibility to you. You have the children. You raise the children. You teach them. 
You teach them in God's word, but God's rules old and, and old fashioned, and that's just that was for then. You know, we have we've we've advanced so far. Have we? Have we advanced so far that we that we degrade life to to, to what we've degraded life to today? We take it, we take it uh, in the womb, and now we're wanting to take it outside the womb, and ultimately we want to take it when you become useless. And I'm getting a lot closer to becoming useless than I used to be. Okay, I see some of you raise your hand and stuff. Let's not go there. All right. Here's the problem. It's an important thing that we need to, we need to value education. We need to value the education of our children, not totally culturally, but scripturally. They need to know God's word. We value cash and property and investment. Some people, some people value those things so much that they are on their mind all the time. There, there are people that have to watch things daily, day in, day out, just to make sure their investment is solid. I, I think I check mine once a month. I shouldn't. I shouldn't check mine once a month. I maybe should wait a little longer because I'm not getting into it every day. But I check it once a month. And I, I had last month, not last month, the month before, I had a very, very bad month. This last month has been a little better for me. But not that much. But here's the, here's, here's the problem. We put value on our cash, on our property, on our investments. Do we put value on our relationship? Some of you put value on your relationship. I value my relationship with my wife and with my children. My, my child, two of my kids were over at the house last night. Heather and, and came over and Faith was there. We ate dinner and uh, uh, Vicki and I, we value our relationship. We did something that they'd never seen us do uh, the other night. We're, we're doing a kind of an exercise together and we did that exercise and they're laughing as they come into the room with their cell phones on recording what we're doing. What's it called? <laughs> Never mind, okay. <laughs> it's nothing terrible. It's just I need, I need, she needs and I need to counterbalance weight to do this. So we hold hands and do this to the deep, a deep squat. We do a deep, deep uh, uh, squat that we go all the way down like this. With, but I can do it better if I'm facing her and holding her hand and she's counting to 30. Okay? But some of us, we, we don't value relationship. We, we have a better relationship with this thing than we do with our partner. We have a better relationship with, with the things that we own than we do our partner. We have a better relationship with, with uh, uh, a restaurant than we do with the church. You go to some place where everybody knows my name and it ain't the church, you're in trouble. There's a problem. Some of you are getting it. I mean, it takes a little while, but. But here's, here's the thing. Relationship, church. What are we going to do in the next five months about our relationships? Not just with our, with our husband and wife and family, but what about the church family? What are we going to do about our relationships in the, in the coming months with, with the church and, and with God in our life? Do we, how much do you value God, the, God the Father, God the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit that's working today? Yeah. How much do we value that? Do we want to see it happening? Do we want to see the move of God in a powerful way? Do we want to see people healed? Do we want to see people filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do we want to see people transformed? Do we, want to see, do we want to see demonic powers be lifted from the hearts and minds and lives of people? See, what do all these things that I've mentioned have in common? They can all be things that we treasure. We can treasure an election. We can treasure, uh, uh, we can treasure education. We can treasure uh, our cash, our property, our investments. We can treasure relationships. We can treasure the church. We can treasure God. 
But it seems like more than not, we're treasuring the culture and the things of this world. We want to be accepted by the world. In, in, second, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, it's not in my notes, it just came to my mind, okay? In, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, you have, you have a, a leader, a king, King Saul, and what does he do? He treasures the opinion and praise of the people rather than what God told him to do. And it, the pri prophet comes and he says, to obey is better than sacrifice. We may cover that later. I'll, I may bring that back in. But the thing is, these all can be things that we treasure. Finding treasure is a dream many people have. How many of you were young thought about uncovering treasure? Oh, yeah. I, I, bought, I bought houses in the past and, and, and got into the smallest of areas wondering if there was treasure back in that area. You know, you, 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 you want to, as a kid, I remember going through the woods and thinking, I'm going to find a giant X and I'm going to dig that up. <laughs> and I'm going to find a treasure chest. It's going to be just the greatest thing in the world. But let me tell you, rarely is it a reality. Very few people ever find treasure. And if they do find a treasure, it's usually much more difficult to get than you would think. I think of the people that found the Titanic and tried to raise it, all the money. I think of the Steamboat Arabia that you go downtown and see that. Uh, they, they about went bankrupt twice trying to resurrect the Steamboat Arabia. The treasure that they found there. Now, was it worth it? I, I believe it was worth it, but ultimately, it's, it's not an easy task. See, see, things that of true value are things that are not given to you. They're things that are earned. Things that are given to us versus things that are earned. I can tell you if I give you something, it's not as valuable as something that you have earned. If you don't deserve it and you get it, you know what? You don't take as good a care of it. I think of things that I've built opposed to things that I've bought. I, things that I put together are more valuable to me than the things that I just go out and buy. Something that, something that is cheap versus something of high quality. It's say, oh, I can get away with this cheap stuff. Well, you probably can for a while, but you value and you take better care of stuff of high quality. When I, pair, when I, buy, when I buy boots, I buy a higher quality boot than some people buy because why? I, they're going to last me for a long time. My, my old brown boots, I had them 27 years. 27 years. Two soles, 27 years. A black pair that I bought a couple of years ago. I, I, I'll, you guys may bury me in them. I don't know. We'll see. Because I take care of them. They, they are a little more expensive, but I take care of them. There's a difference. Friendships versus relationships. I have a lot of friends, but my relationships are probably a little bit more small. Because we value relationships. I buy people, I think, that are my friends that if I was really in trouble, uh, they probably wouldn't do anything except pat me on the back and tell me, good luck. But I have relationships with, with people that I believe if something happened, they'd be right there for me and walk through it with me. Where am I going with all this? Well, I'm going to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You say, Tracy, if you're going to preach on that, yeah, I am for a while, and then I'm going to move away from it. Get on some other stuff. You say, we all know that scripture. And, and, and we all uh, uh, somewhat live that scripture. Yeah, that's the problem. You somewhat live that scripture. See, the Greek word that's used here in the passage uh, for treasure means something of exceptional value. Something of exceptional value. By, con by contrasting earthly and heavenly treasure, Jesus is encouraging us to focus on what matters most, which is treasures in heaven. 
Our treasures need to be in heaven. Now, that's difficult because it, it's, you're not getting a monthly statement from heaven. You don't, you don't have an online account that you can click in and say, hmm, how's my treasures adding up this week or this month? We kind of wonder about it. You know, you, you don't always see the, the accomplishments that you, that you want to see based on the world standards. But ultimately, here it is in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. It says, what, what can we do? What can we do to lay up treasures? Because ultimately, I don't know what to do to lay up treasures in heaven. What is it that, that lays up treasures in heaven? 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says this, Do not love the world nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eye, the pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. 17, and the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So what is, what is laying treasures up in heaven? It's doing the will of the Father. Laying up treasures in heaven is doing the will of God here on earth. What is the will of God? Maybe some of you have figured it out, or, or, and, and you're saying, well, I've got that all down. I, and i got to tell you, how is it working out for you? Uh, are, are you sure you really got it? See, some of you think, well, my current life is truly living in the will of God. And I've got to tell you, or ask you, is it? Is it truly? Is what you're doing on a daily basis, how you're living your life on a daily basis, the, the way you act and respond to others, is it on a daily basis? Is your relationship with others on a daily basis truly in the will of God? And get quiet. We may get quiet the rest of the way through. We'll just have to see how this goes. See, clearly we live in the world of confusion. Because some of us think that we are all the time living in the will of God. If you are a person, I'll say if you are a man, because I know men better than I do women. Matter of fact, if you took everything I know about women and put them on a three by five card, there'd be space left over. <laughs> Didn't need no woman telling me amen on that, I'll tell you, wow. <laughs> Almost broke my train of thought there. <laughs> we live in a world of confusion. As it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33a, it says, For God didn't, is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And the confusion that you have today is, are you truly living in the word of, will of God? I got to tell you, Many people say today, well, I don't know what the will of God is. I, I, I can't figure out the will of God. What is the will of God for my life? Is, is it just specific everyday moments and, and activities? What is the will of God for my life? Well, I got to tell you, I, I didn't realize this till recently. God told us what the will of God is for our lives. He, he gave it to us very clear in Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. You say, Tracy, that's in the Old Testament. All of God's word is God's word. Amen. Micah chapter 6, verse 6 says, because we think, well, what, what can I do to be in the will of God? And, and Micah had people who were struggling with it. And so here's what he wrote. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. He writes this in verse 6 of Micah, Micah chapter 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Verse 8. He has told you, oh man, oh man, not old man, oh man, 
Some of us takes to be old before we figure this out. But oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before your God. To, to, To do justice. That's a tough one in our world because we have lost our minds about justice. We, we have lost our minds. I, I don't care what you say. We live, we have promoted in our world a world of fantasy. Live the fantasy. Live the dream. The dreams are going to turn into nightmares for our world. Why is that? Why, why, have, why, have, we, why have we promoted, promoted fantasy so much in our youth, all the way now into the lifestyles of men and women. Oh, I'm sorry. All the other genders. You know, I'm just kidding there. Here we go. We, we created a fantasy that you can be something that's, that doesn't even exist. That, that, that's not, not physically right even. That's another sermon, another time. This is justice. We have, to, we have to what? Do justice. Where do we find true justice and who has true justice? It's in the word of God. You, we, we, have a, we have a fine way of perverting justice. Matter of fact, we pervert justice on a regular basis because we put names in front of justice. Anytime you put a name in front of justice, you pervert justice because justice is something that stands on its own. So what do we have? We have social justice. We have racial justice. We, We have all these variations of justice and ultimately this is just. God's word is just. His commands are just. His will is just. Do justice, love kindness. Kindness is something that we all think we do. We we all think we're kind, but sometimes your kindness isn't kindness. It really is is a form of hate. I I get up here on Sundays and, and I yell a lot. Some people think I yell a lot. And I raise my voice a lot. But but here's a fact. I raise my voice because I want to warn you. You know what? At, at times, if you're standing in the street, in the middle of the street and a truck's coming, I need to get you out of the street with kindness. Come on, let's just move over here. When my kids, if they got caught playing in the street, what did I do? Did I do it with kindness? Yes, I did. And it was a kindness that saved their lives. This... this And and, you know, I say this a lot, this mushy feel-good kindness that the world, the culture expects from everybody is not kindness at all if if our culture is going to hell. Now, can I I change it with my shrill voice and my my volume? No, I can't probably change everybody, but there is ways that each of us can connect with somebody and change them. You know, I have have three daughters, uh, and, and out of those three daughters, each one have a unique and different personality and I have to handle each one differently there's, there's, there's one that I could just say I was disappointed and de- devastate them and they would, they would change there's other that would take yeah <laughs> not to tell you which one was which but ultimately here, here's the fact here's the facts if you're, if you're related to me, I can use you. That's, that's just a rule, okay? There's the facts. But here's another fact. You've got to find what works. My ministry doesn't work for everybody. But you know what? Your ministry might work for them. Oh, I'm not a minister. Yes, you are. You've been called to be a part of a royal priesthood, each and every one of you, that have repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It's you. You're ministering. No, but I'm not a very good minister. Well, do something about it. I say that out of love and kindness. 
The last one is one I want to touch on because we dealt with it last week a little bit. Humility. This is what I think. Oh, pretty soon I'm going to ask you to underline the eyes in a, in a passage of scripture that I'm going to read. This is what I think. No, what counts, what matters is what God thinks. Now, when your thinking aligns with God's thinking, which is in God's word, then you're okay. I could really get off base here for a few minutes, and, and if you guys will let me, I might do that here in a minute. I'll do it right now. <laughs> Vicki and I went for a drive the other night. Since gas is under $4, we figured we could afford it maybe. <laughs> Took our whole paycheck, but we got, we got it done. <laughs> went for a drive the other night. I won't tell you where, but there's a big sign that a guy has on his property. It's vote, vote no on Amendment 2. Our amendment on August 2nd, vote no, vote no. And then a smaller sign by that sign that says, I'm a pastor and I'm pro-choice. And uh, I, you know, I want, I want to put a pastor of what? Pastor of what? Because ultimately, are you a pastor for the culture or are you a pastor for God? We, we have a lot of pastors for the culture because they, they won't humble themselves to what God thinks and they'll just preach what they think. I gotta tell you, I have humbled myself many times from what I think to adapt to what God thinks. I won't go into detail there yet. See, every one, of, every one of these things, justice, kindness, and humility, are traits related to the way that we relate to others. Every one of them falls in line with the way we relate to others. Justice, kindness, and humility. I, that, that guy that's always so proud, you can't hardly stake it, take it. He's not very humble at all. It's difficult to be friends with him. Somebody that's never kind, never does anything good or nice or, or, or friendly to you, it's hard to be friends with that person. That, that person who, who, uh, who never does justice or never believes in justice, the right being done or the right thing always happening, that, that person's problems, you have problems being in relationship with them. We cherish, we need to cherish relationships over possessions. Our relationship with God, our relationship with others. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and love others. I did a, I've done a couple of funerals where the topic that when I went and talked to the family was, he who dies with the most toys wins. I got to tell you, he who dies with the most relationships wins. In Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21, I want you to underline every time you hear the word I or see it written here. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich uh, man produced plentiful. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. Verse 20. But God, every time you see that, something's about to happen. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you and the things that you have prepared, uh, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. If you took count there, there were six eyes 
what shall I do? I have nothing, nowhere to store my crops. I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build large ones. I will store all my grain and my goods. I will say to my soul. Do you see justice in this man's life? Someone into self will not punish or even correct themselves. She's okay. Someone that is into themselves is not into justice for themselves. There'll never be punishment. There'll never be, there'll never be punishment. There'll never be anything that, that truly meets up with the justice that God wants us to perform to lay up treasures in heaven. The next one is this. Do you see kindness in this man's life? Nothing for others are concerned about anybody else but himself, anyone else but himself. The last one is this. Do you see humility in this man's life? I got it on my own. I built it on my own. And I'll have it all my way. I don't see that in this man. I don't see any treasures being laid up for him in heaven. I see six, I see six eyes, which is it's coincidental that in six days God created the heavens and the earth and all the world and all creation, and this guy has six all about him, and God has six all about us. That's love. That's kindness. That's justice. That's that's Humility, when we recognize that. Six eyes, and God's response to the six eyes is, come on, you guys know what it is. You fool. You fool. You fool. Living a life that all we do is lay up treasures for ourselves here on earth. And I'm not just talking monetary treasures. I'm talking about treasures. We we get into the culture. We get into this lifestyle. We get into this way of life. We get into the, the way of, of thinking that is, that is acceptable in this world. Then ultimately, what we're doing, we're laying up treasures here instead of in heaven. Because, because here's what King Saul laid up treasures on earth by being accepted by the people. You have the same option told you in weeks past, get used to being different. Get used to being different. Get used to living different. Get used to thinking different than the world. See, there's someone that always wants to steal or that always wants your treasures, no matter what they are. I think of the Old West, what was it? They always wanted to steal the gold, the wagon train, the, the, the gold shipment. They wanted to steal the gold. Uh, and, and somebody always wanted to steal it. Today, you know, people want to steal your cash. They want to steal your investments. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, home fraud now or their title fraud is, is on the rise. They want to steal your checking account. Uh, back in my day when I was in the banking, that was always a big thing. Get in and, and write fraudulent checks on someone else's account. They want to steal your checks. They want to steal your banking information. They want to steal your jewelry. I watched a video this week where a, where a uh, pastor, they're live streaming in a part of the Northeast and, and they're live streaming their sermon and three guys in hooded sweatshirts come in and, and rob the church, rob the pastor and all the congregants of their jewelry and their cash. They're on live stream and people are seeing this and, and thank God for security. See, there's somebody that always wants to steal. They want to steal your identity. Identity theft is big nowadays. They want to steal your car. They want to steal your home. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. See, the thief wants to steal. What does, what does our spiritual enemy want to steal more than anything else? He wants to steal your soul. He wants to steal your faith. He roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And the scripture before that in, in uh, 1 Peter is what? He wants to steal your faith. 
Satan, the enemy, wants to steal your faith. He wants to steal your soul. It used to be we used to catch and punish thieves. We still do, to, we still catch them every once in a while. Oh, watch it, Tracy. Where are my police officers? They're not here today. I have, I, uh, they can watch it, though, and correct me if I'm wrong. But ultimately, here's the problem. You know what the new thing is? You get stuff stolen and the police show up because I've had stuff stolen and the police have shown up. And you know what their comment is? You should have done a better job protecting your property. Now, I got a problem with that, and I don't have a problem with it, because I'm going to go both ways here. You're going to say, Tracy, are you straddling the fence on this? I'm still trying to figure this out, okay, uh, scripturally. But here's, a, here's the situation is, I have property and we have bad people. Let's punish the bad people. Well, through Scripture, we see the punishment of bad people. But today, it's, it's let's punish the people who have things by making them spend more money and do more things to protect what they have instead of there just being a common law, a common morality that's taught everywhere. Amen. Thou shalt not steal. Amen. Oh, that's a Ten Commandment. We can't post that. Boy, I'm going a lot of ways and stepping on a lot of toes, probably. Here it is. It used to be we catch and punish the three thieves. Today, we have a new way of looking at it. You don't do enough to protect your property. And I guess I got to tell you, I agree with both ways. I agree that the thief has to be punished. And when a day comes, and when the day comes for judgment... And justice to be doled out, the thieves will be punished. They will be punished. You say, I can't, they, I can't believe they stole that. They did, I can't believe they did that to me. I can't believe they took that from me. But ultimately, here's the other thing. We also need to protect against the thief stealing anything from us. Spiritually, are we doing a good job protecting ourselves from the thief? Sometimes a little bit of protection would be putting this away, putting the laptops away, putting away the culture, putting away those television programs that are just corrupting your heart and your mind. Stop watching the movies that, that, that destroy uh, uh, the, the peace and joy that God gives you in your heart and mind. Tracy, you're sounding old. I'm sounding like this. In closing, I'm sounding like this because I need to close. Here it is, justice. That's a treasure that we need to lay. And we always need to stand for justice. E even though sometimes justice hurts us. I ran a stop sign several years ago. It was several years ago that I ran a stop sign and got caught. We'll just keep that going. That's, that's all one sentence there. I ran a stop sign several years ago and got caught. Not admitting to any that I've ran recently. But I got caught running one several years ago. And the fine was steep. And you know what, I, I was upset, but I paid the fine because why? I did it. Justice, we need to love justice. Even when it hurts us, we need to love justice. We need to be kind and love kindness. And kindness is the sweet, cuddly, mushy stuff at times, but it's also kindness is the hard, rough, rough, tough stuff. Some of you, even in this building today, have experienced in the last few months a kindness that was rubbed you the wrong way for a while. But ultimately, you know what? It was out of a kindness and love that that was doled out to you. Humility. 
This is the tough one. Last week we talked about what's missing in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and it's humble yourself. Humble yourself before, humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. <clears throat> There's the key. We don't want to be humble anymore. We've raised generations that aren't humble. And we and we and we put people on a pedestal so much that they have a difficult time being humble. Today, before coming in here, <clears throat> I was humbled by somebody on the foyer who said, I'm sitting on pins and needles waiting for your sermon today. He said, bring your A game. <laughs> I mean, I don't bring my A game every week? Uh, okay. <laughs> I love that person so much. And because they're family of sorts, I can use them <laughs> of sorts. <clears throat> Humility is a tough thing, but it's a thing that gives us more treasure in heaven than you could ever imagine. Because your humility is not necessarily to the culture and to the world. Your humility is to the word of God and the ways of God because you are in a personal daily battle about I and him. Is it gonna be me or is it gonna be him? Is it gonna be my way or is it gonna be his way? Is it gonna be my thoughts or is it gonna be his thoughts? Am I gonna vote what helps me? What helps a friend? What eases the conscience of somebody else? Or am I going to vote? God's thoughts. God's way. You say, God hasn't picked a candidate. Well, let me tell you, you can line every candidate up and they'll never, none of them. Last several, how many elections, I have not found one candidate that I could vote for that lined up perfectly here. But I can tell you there's one better than the other every time. Let's close with 2 Peter, and I will close after this. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. It says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, as some count slowness, slowness but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should, I love this word, I love the way the ESV puts it, reach repentance, an effort. I want to reach repentance. Because once you believe, there's, a, there's, there's an effort put into reach repentance, repent of your sins, and, and repentance is turning, and that's effort. Reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And when the heavens will pass away, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar. And the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. And the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Everything that you treasure here is one day going to be destroyed. Everything that you bought, everything that you purchased, everything that you built, everything that you put your, your time and effort in here on this earth will one day be destroyed when, the, when someone comes like a thief. Not the thief, but like a thief. See, the thief comes when you don't expect him to come. And I got to tell you, protect from the thief. But prepare for someone that comes like a thief. Some of you, it's so late in this message, you're asleep and you didn't get that. And I want you to get it one more time. Protect from the thief. 
but prepare for the one who comes like a thief. Everything will be destroyed. Where are your treasures? Let's stand. There's a book that came out in 2007. And 2007 was a big year in my life. If you don't know it, it was a huge year in my life. Changed my life forever, 2007 did. Changed my direction forever. But there was a book that came out in 2007. It was called The Age of Speed. The author was Vince... uh, uh, Pacente. And why I'm bringing this up is because he had a unique motivation for his life. And I wish I could find something to motivate you for your life because I don't know how long you have to lay up treasures in heaven. This, the Father could call today and he, it could be over. The Father could say, today, is the day, and it would be over. But in this book, the author, he went to India, and some guru told him he was gonna die at the age of 40. So at age 26, he decided to take up speed skating and pursue it competitively. Only four years later, he was vying for gold in the Winter Olympics. Some told him that he was gonna die. Someone told him that he was gonna die at age 40. So he got serious about life. Whatever we're going to do, we need to do it now. Whatever you're gonna do, you need to do it now. When I was a child, I laughed and wept, time crept. When I was a youth, I dreamed and talked and time walked. When I became a grown man, time ran. And later, as older I grew, time flew. Soon, I shall find while passing on, time gone. Start today laying treasures up. You say, Tracy, I want to retire good. I want you all to retire good, but I also want us to retire with treasures in heaven. Now is the time to lay up and to seek treasures in heaven. Father in heaven, Spirit of God, come and speak to the hearts and minds of these people powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. The altars are open. The worship team's going to worship. If you need prayer, there'll be prayer teams on each side. If, if you have questions about the message or about, about your relationship with Jesus Christ, come talk to somebody. We'll be glad to walk you through it. God has a will for your life and he has a plan for your life. Don't miss it live in it. Amen. God bless you. Welcome back. I'm so glad you could be with us for the sermon today and letting God's word soak in deep and change our lives. That's right. We are so thankful you're here. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to email us office at thehillministries.church. And if you'd like to participate in the offering today, we would love to have you do that. And you can do that several different ways. Download the Secure Give app and find at the Hill Ministries. You can go online to thehillministries.church and click on the giving tab or join us in person next week and drop it in the offering box. Awesome. We hope to see you next time.